Good morning everyone and welcome to a new special episode because today we've got five mistakes every photographer should avoid and we've been there, we've done that, so we want to save you time. Let's get started. All right guys, welcome to a new episode. Welcome to the set of our next Star Wars movie with Jérôme. Uh, jokes aside, we've been a photographer for years and We've got some tips we want to share with you because after all those years, there's things that we see that we make mistakes with, that we can improve, but also we hang out with like really good photographers sometimes and we learn a lot from that. So we kind of want to pass on that knowledge. And if you don't know us, this is Jérôme Traveler, travel Hello. photographer. Thanks for having who's me. been everywhere around the world almost. He's counting the countries, it's getting there. <laughs> um, and I'm Pierre T. Lambert, travel adventure photographer and the creator of the 30 Day Adventure to Great Photos, a step-by-step -step method to taking your photography to the next level no matter what your gear no matter where you are and it has worked for over 2500 students around the world so check out the link in the description if you want to join the next session but Jérôme are you ready we yes. have five mistakes plus a bonus one so don't miss it let's start with number five yeah and those are very useful mistakes because we all went through all those but one of the first mistakes that I was doing when I was starting is to always try to shoot at the lowest aperture I can you know mm. we have the tendency to tell ourselves like we spend so much money on those lenses <laughs> and my, lens, everything at F1, my lens can go to like 2. Point, f2.8 or f1.8 1.4 so I have to shoot everything on 1.4 and don't get me wrong like it's beautiful if you can do it but in certain scenarios certain situation and environments you have to um, not forget that some details are also important in the foreground and the background and you want to get certain parts of the image in focus mm -hmm. so especially when i'm out in nature that's when i try to shoot as much as possible at like f 5.6 f 7.1 or sometimes even higher um, to maintain some of the details that i need in my composition it's something that's very common when we get those we spend a lot of money on that gear we, we kind of want to make use of it, it yeah. which makes sense you know you're doing Maybe you're shooting at night, then yes, shoot at 1.4, shoot at 1.8. But over time, I stopped shooting everything at 50 millimeter f1.2. No, I'm joking, I, I was never doing that. But a little bit, especially at the beginning, because it's so cool to see the bokeh. But then at one point, you're like, wait, I don't need bokeh in all my shots. You know, like the story that I want to share and show in my, in my images is not always about tiny, tiny depth of field. Sometimes you need more. You, sometimes you need that background, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you even need your subject to be blurry, yeah. you know? And, and the background to be kind of in focus. So I, I love that, that thinking around how can I shoot at f8, f6, you know, and how can I use those apertures yeah, optimal. exactly. Your lens might be able to go to f1.4, but it's not stuck at 1.4. It can go all the way to f22, f16. So might as well use it to your advantage, depending on the situation. Yeah, and it's really something that is, it's kind of photojournalistic style also. And they say that with Nat Geo, they usually like encourage people to shoot around f8 minimum or something like yeah. that, because then it's more documentary looking. I have a full video for you on how to use those higher apertures and when and in which circumstances it will work. So if you're confused as how to shoot at f6, f8, like how to really make the most of it, you can check out that video. I think it's very helpful. But there's something else I noticed, okay, which is kind of mistake number two, and it is not paying attention to details. Mm -hmm. I think being we were at the Sony event with a lot of pro photographers, and that's something I noticed is that the attention to detail is really high and reminded me when I started to do portraits like oh, close to 10 years ago now, I'm getting old. I literally had my wife assist for me or a friend sometimes just to have someone check the details. Let's say you had hair in front of the face that I didn't notice because I was too caught up in my settings. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I have to direct people and pay attention to the details. It can be hard, so it can be this, or you're setting up the van in a way to get a really cool shot, or you're setting up a table, but then you didn't realize that there was a stain or maybe like a, a piece of pillow pointing. I mean, there is like anything that can go in your frame and you won't realize it until later. Yeah and you want to avoid Photoshop at all costs. Exactly. Life. Some of those details are very important because sometimes you notice those details after you've shot the photo and you cannot take your eyes off that. And it's almost like the only thing that you're going to see in the image. Like you're not going to see the rest of the image, but you're only going to see like uh, that bird that flew into uh, the frame or like the, again, like you said, like a piece of hair that's like in your yeah. forehead or it just takes away from like the whole 
picture and your attention is focused on that one little detail that you missed out. Yeah, and especially if you're printing your photos, which I've encouraged you a million times already. If you print your photo, you see it through a different angle and sometimes those mistakes come up or like those details you, you missed. And that really hurts when you spend hundreds on the photo and, and you're like, oops, yeah. Nah, could be better. Yeah. Now, if you haven't noticed, we're in an absolutely epic location in Utah. And with that comes a very, very big common mistake, which will be mistake number three. And it is looking in the wrong direction. John, can you tell us more? Yeah, sometimes uh, we go in a certain location or we wake up early in the morning for sunrise and we tend to be focused on that one thing that we came for, for example, sunrise. Or if you travel to a place and there's like a iconic landmark or like a monument, you tend to only look at that one hero monument or happening like sunrise, for example, just because you came there for that. But we tend to miss out on the other details surrounding that. So we had a situation recently at Kando where one of our friend photographer, um, we all went on top of the mountain. We took the tram uh, to get there early in the morning for sunrise and we're all taking photos of the sunrise because it was beautiful, but our friend was in his little corner with a 400 millimeter 2.8 lens and he was taking photos of the chipmunk. And I told myself, how did you see that? Everyone was focused on the sunrise because we went on top of the mountain for the sunrise and you're in your corner taking photos of chipmunk and your photo came out 10 times better than the sunrise that we were there to shoot. And I was very impressed because everyone was just focused on that. But then he just took a step back and he focused on perhaps the other happenings that happened during sunrise. Maybe the chipmunks come out from their little cave early in the morning to you eat some little flowers. flowers. Yeah, he was literally holding the flower <laughs> like that and eating the flower. Oh my God, I want to see Which that. was amazing. Sometimes you need to take like one or two step backs and look at what else is there in your environment that you might be missing out on because you're too focused on your one hero subject especially if you're trying to get cinematic shots if you're trying to paint a whole picture of a place you need different angles you need different things and yesterday at sunrise uh, we were at the moonscape overlook in utah and everyone's looking at the sunrise and so it's something what you're talking about is something i've been practicing for several years now and i went around and looked and i found this jeep wrangler with a couple and I was like, wait, the reflection on the Jeep is really cool. Can we play with something like that? And we had played with it, I think, at a sunset at Kondo. Um, Emmett was taking some portrait of a girl with the car and, and I was playing also with the light reflecting. And then I played with that again at sunrise and I talked to the couple, I had them walk and like be over there. And it just looked cool because instead of having just a main shot, now I have small detail that paint a full picture for me. And also usually those details are like when you shoot through a window and it's like the first, the foreground's completely blurry or your subject is blurry, but the background is like in focus. Um, I think those are super cinematic and really, really tell a nice story. Yeah, for sure. We all have that one friend who you tell yourself, how the hell did you see that? He's like a genius of photography and, and has like a vision that's like, two steps back from, from you. And that's something that I'm also working on as well. Like I'm just trying to like be attention a little bit more to like the other details surrounding uh, the location that I'm at. Yeah, and it's something that's hard, but it's it takes practice and it's possible. It's literally something that I always mention. It's like learning that and learning that vision, especially that's what I'm talking about in, in the 30 day course is that it's not about your gear. It's not about the technicalities of shooting. It's like, how are you able to like unlock that in your brain so that mm -hmm. you think about that, so that you see it, etc. And everyone can do it. It's just literally comes from like following in some structure and practice around it. And, and that, then you have like those shots where everyone's like, whoa, how did you see this? And yeah. we're all in the same yeah. place. And that's awesome. I love that. But there is a caveat. Caveat? Caveat? Caveat. There's a caveat. Caviar? There's a caviar. This is a caveat in here, which is actually trying to do too much yeah. when you're shooting. I think we're guilty. Yeah, definitely. In certain situations like sunrise, for example, you tell yourself, I only have like a few minutes to capture the best light. And so you obviously want to shoot all the angles, because especially if you travel to a certain location for sunrise, you want to try to get as much as possible. But sometimes overdoing and trying to do everything at the same time, you end up with 20 photos that are all 
just okay or mediocre rather than you know focusing and taking your time on maybe one or two mm -hmm. angles to get the perfect shot that you were very happy with that you're going to remember for the rest of your life wait are you saying running around with the 7200 the 1635 a 2470 for the, for the two minute sunrise window is not a good idea <laughs> i don't know if it's advisable uh, we've had so many sunrises here that were like a little bit deceiving because they would start nice and then layer of clouds so you had like three minutes to get a shot and that's exactly what would happen and i've noticed like with landscape photographers are usually or like the the like old school landscape photographer i'll call them sorry sorry if, if you're like from that old school world but i'm saying old school because it's almost like a film vibe where people really take their time before taking a photo right it's like you want to get it right and I've, so i see my photographer friends who are like that they will set up the tripod have their shot ready and when the sun comes boom they click it versus i will be more someone who will run around so it's something i'm trying to practice to like slow a little bit the, the good side is that i become better at getting fast photos you right. know like and, and like but at the same time it's like i'm gonna run to that spot i'm like the light is not right so let's remember that spot and then come back to it. And so I'm going to go a little further, but then I have to run back. I mean, how many times have we been running on that trip? Oh you yeah, know, all Every the time. time sunset, sunrise, and maybe like slowing down, taking that one epic shot is, is better. Yeah, especially if you're working with someone else as well, like for yeah, example, you're working yeah, yeah. with a model, you don't want to rush them because that's going to put pressure on them and they might not get the right angles. Especially if you're working with someone else, it's better to kind of like slow down the pace to just try to focus on the hero photos mm -hmm. and the compositions that you want uh, rather than try to get everything. I'll, I'll add to that, not everyone's ready to run around like yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. um, so yes, if you're working with other people, focus on, on just one thing and one thing only. So yeah, that's pretty good. I like that one. I like that one. Okay, what's our final one? Ooh. Our final advice. Oh, we have a bonus one after, I forgot. So the final point that you should not make this mistake is to never crop your photos. Now, first of all, and this sounds obvious to me, but I need to repeat it because a lot of people still make the error, is to not level your horizon. There's so many photos that I see that is just a little bit sl slightly slanted and that's the only thing that i see in the photo like unless i see it straight away unless it's intentional unless it's intentional like yeah. eric hercules is a friend he's working with angles like he goes super creative on the angles and yeah. i absolutely love what he does but there was a product presentation recently from sony and i was like i feel like your photos are a little bit like crooked but it's not intentional right uh i love you sony but but like I don't know what photographer was taking those shots, but it was like slightly funny. Yeah, not, and if that's the funny, case, that's I, the only thing that you see in the photo. Yeah, because it's. I think the moment you have doubt in your mind that it's not leveled, then it's like, I don't know if you made a mistake or if it was intentional. Right. But if it's like really obvious you made it intentionally, then that's that's awesome. You know, I think that's like super helpful and, and you can create something different with that. Yeah, for sure. But, but going back to cropping. Yeah, so that was point number one, like obviously, level yeah. your horizon but also very importantly remember to crop your photos if you have too much information in your frame that's one of the mistakes that i was making when i started photography i was shooting everything on super wide angle because i was like the more the merrier yeah. the more the better and the more information you have the more the photo is going to be impressive but that was a mistake on my part to try to not crop the photo uh, because oftentimes when you crop the photo and you get rid of some of the information it leaves you with a more compelling story like you have one hero photo some surrounding elements in your frame and your composition that complement the hero subject and that gives information about the situation and the story but then leaving out some of the details on the outside of the frame for example would actually tell a better story the less information equals more information yeah, less is more. It's just like when you to go to a restaurant. The menu with 10 pages to choose from is so overwhelming. So think about it, it's the same for your eyes. Give them the one set menu that the chefs make. You yeah. Know, it's like three course and it's set and you can't choose anything. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Like, you know those restaurants that are known for one dish? Yes. And everyone goes there for that one dish. I feel like photography is the same. Like you could be an expert in like one specific field or like even just put your focus um, even on like momentarily moments mm -hmm. like at sunrise just put your focus on that one shot that you want and that shot is going to be 10 times better and people are going to appreciate that photo better than if you're trying to do everything but just like how great. Taco Bell is known for sushi <laughs> <laughs> haram <laughs>
<laughs> I'm done, I'm retiring. <laughs> Going to the bonus round, because I've got a bonus one for you guys. It's gonna be simply shoot with your edits in mind when you're gonna be taking photos, like really retouching. How do you want your final image to look like? All the photos that you've seen that I've, I've shared have been edited with my presets, and I kind of know that when I'm gonna go in and shoot. But beyond the preset part where I'm gonna, I know what, what kind of ambience I'm gonna tune in, there's also some shots where I wanna bring out the shadows, others I'm not gonna bring them out, and so I can actually t tweak that in camera right away. When we're at sunset for that epic shot with the, with the, with the mono, yesterday which you should definitely watch the whole adventure on that it was crazy that was nuts um, I knew I wanted harsh shadows on that one so I dialed in the right settings for that and that really really helps in my opinion save time is in your edit but also really get as close as possible to your creative vision in camera and I think that's we should leave people yeah, with that exactly. one. I personally shoot a lot of my content just for Instagram and yeah. so my brain is already configured to know that when I'm going to shoot the photo, I'm going to crop it 4x5 dimension yeah. for Instagram. And if you ever shoot editorial stuff with magazines, they will always tell you we need space at the top or at the left or at the right to put text or to put text box, put quotes, whatever, you know, like life is beautiful or 30 like, days to amazing photos. They, uh, great photos. Uh, but yes, but it could be amazing photos. <laughs> 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 or join now, you know, link in the description, stuff like that. Uh, but jokes aside, I, I think it's, it's important. It's easy to practice and it really makes a difference in your work. And as a photographer, maybe you want to go pro or not, but that will set you apart from a lot of people, in my opinion. Short stash is good at that. Yeah. He's taking a photo and then he knows that he's going to put some um, fonts and some stuff inside his frame. Ah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I like his work too. <sighs> All right, I think you've got a lot to work with here. So I'll let you go. Remember, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. Join the next session of the 30 Day Adventure to Great Photos. Link in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.